Yo, what's up ladies and gentlemen? Good to see you again. And we've got our first official OPO6 games. Finally got to play some at Locals yesterday, this past Monday. And uh, honestly, it was such a blast. I got to bring out Gecko Moria. I brought out a couple other deck lists as well, but I was kind of running on a time constraint, so I didn't get to play, you know, a bunch of different matches that I was trying to, but definitely will be looking forward to doing so, um, you know, in the very near future. I uh, got a couple of other you know, local spots I'll be hitting up throughout the week, so going to be trying uh, the, my best to see if I can get as many matchups as possible. But I have been absolutely enjoying Gecko Moria. If you guys have been tuning into my streams lately, I really do appreciate it because honestly, the the streams have been fantastic and we've just been testing Gecko Moria a lot. Uh, both of us mulligan here, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, my opponent playing Perona actually ends up winning the dice roll and chooses to go second. It's really good. I would have preferred to go second in this matchup because Perona just gets a lot of a lot of really good, you know, curve off of going second. And uh, and actually, no, he did not choose to mulligan. Excuse me. He did end up keeping the life, but he's perona out with the Altar Leader, the beautiful sleeves and some pretty dope custom Dawn sleeves as well. And now we're going to see Perona, or excuse me, brand new coming down, um, picking up that Suru on the first turn here. And I'm going to go up to three myself. Uh, pretty easy, just, you know, using leader effect. I'll go ahead and trash the Perona, but bringing it back out, forcing a trash of a card. I end up getting a Sabo, which is really useful in this matchup, actually. So I was very happy to see that that was the card that was trashed. And a 5k swing with lead does end up using that leader effect to rest my Perona and then KOing it with Ryuma. I do think that this is a pretty bad matchup for Gecko Moria. I don't think that it's, you know, the worst matchup in the world, but it is, uh, I would say, favored towards Perona because a lot of Gecko Moria's uh, cards do end up falling into that 4 cost, 5 cost range, which makes it a little difficult for us to establish a board when it can easily be KO'd by X-Drake or Ryuma. But I'll go ahead and cycle out a Dr. Hog back here and bringing Perona back to life though, forcing another trash. And I'm just trying to get as many cards out of hand as possible. We end up getting the baby five right here and then he will counter out with Vergo. <clears throat> I'm going to use that brand new though, try and get some cards into trash. Unfortunately, uh, I, well, fortunately I do get good cards in the trash that we needed. However, unfortunately we do end up missing that uh, search right there. So down a little bit on the cards, but uh, rest the Perona with leader effect and swing seven into it. No shot of my protecting that and a 6k swing. I'm just going to go ahead and counter, but baby five is now coming into the uh, board and does luckily find that 10 cost of flamingo on the last search but i was very happy with this uh, does end up unfortunately trashing a gecko moria as well as a 10 cost ofi there off the brand new so that actually ended up being very helpful for me and i'm like okay now i don't have to deal with as many of those in the late stages of the game but i know that i have a 10 cost ofi that is going to be lurking right around the corner and uh that's uh it's pretty scary pretty scary believe we're at seven dawn yeah we should be at seven dawn this turn uh, i'm gonna go ahead and play down kuzan i know that uh, my opponent is more than likely going to use gecko moria the following turn so i want to have kuzan um, and you know potentially able to use it i go ahead and trash a couple of cards uh, bringing back dr hog back to get my own gecko moria back and so now I've added the 8 cost to hand. I want to have it for the following turn. He surprisingly lets the Ryuma go. But it actually wasn't that surprising. Uh, because, yeah, he actually just hits me with the 8 cost Moria here. And brings the Ryuma right back. Uh, KOing the Kuzan. But a 5k to life. I kind of have to decide whether this is worth countering out. Or if I should just take here. And I do decide to just take, I pick up an Ice Age, which is massive. I'm going to need that to get rid of his Gecko the following turn. But uh, yeah, we do see the Ryuma KOing, unfortunately, my beautiful, beautiful uh, 
Kuzan, which would have been super helpful in dealing with the Moria. I wouldn't have had to, uh, I wouldn't have had to do certain things this turn, but I end up going a 5k swing with Dr. Hog back into life. He does take getting down to two and I'll go five to life once again, forcing out that Borsalino from hand, which yet again makes me very happy. But uh, Ice Age onto Gecko, bringing it down to three. And now I can just do like a Luchi into a uh, Suru or like a Helmeppo. But I don't believe I had Helmeppo in trash at the moment. So I'll just go ahead and use the uh, Rob Luchi effect to get a couple of cards back to the bottom of the deck, but also get rid of the eight cost and the baby five. Want to limit my opponent's ability to search for more of those 10 cost Oflamingos. Um, but we're just going to see a five to life here. And I'm just kind of thinking about it in my head. <clears throat> I'm like, I really don't want to get much lower. Uh, 6k, I'm also going to counter out. He rests the Rob Lucci, though, and puts down the 10 cost O Flamingo. So now I've got my rested characters. I'm a little, uh, I'm in a bit of a weird spot. Uh, I do take my time this turn to kind of think about what I'm going to do, but I know that with the 10 cost O Flamingo, it's a bit of an issue. And uh, Ryuma is a threat the following turn, but it's not that big of a threat. And I actually think that I make my biggest mistake in this match right here. Um, I look over my opponent's trash. I'm just kind of deciding like, you know, what are the odds of him potentially having another 10 cost? Uh, and that was kind of what I was fearing was another 10 cost potentially. But I, I do take my time uh, on this turn and just kind of like really think through like what are my best options with the cards I have in hand. I believe I had a Borsalino and a Sabo that I could have played this turn, but I do end up deciding to do this a little differently. I just go five with Suru. Uh, he doesn't have a ton of counter power in hand, so this actually works out really well to my benefit. And now this is where I think I made a mistake is I decide to swing the Gecko Moria. Well, I play Sabo first. Uh, just to get a couple of newer cards, get a couple counter cards. And um, yeah, I think I end up making the biggest mistake by swinging into the Ryuma. I play Sabo first so that I don't, uh, none of my characters get KO'd. But I believe I should have went for life here. Uh, and you'll see why here shortly. But I, I decide to go for the Ryuma. I played a little scared, played a little safer. Uh, but we are limited to, I think, like three cards in hand. And he's just going to use the leader effect onto Sabo, bringing it down to a four cost. And that is going to allow Brook to just send it to the trash because Brook is not a KO effect. It's simply just a, hey, put that in trash. We don't like that. I know that my opponent can't play 10 cost, obviously, after playing Brook. So I feel like I'm in a solid spot here. Uh, I'm really kind of banking on him swinging into Gecko Moria if possible. And uh, I give him a 2k counter, but uh, this is a bit of a weird decision on what we should do in this situation. Uh, five into Dr. Hogback, I do give him a 1k counter. And um, yeah, I was kind of thinking that I messed up right there because if he did just attach all the rest of the Dawn and swing at Moria, I wouldn't be able to defend it. But yeah, it's a this is a tough call. Um, and I think that he actually just goes for the guaranteed KO on one of the swings, which was very smart and goes into, I believe, Rob Lucci with the, uh, with the, uh, 10 cost Ophi. Yeah. So super smart. Uh, we're just going to see a 7k swing into Dr. Hogback. And now I find myself in a bit of a pickle because if I protect it, great. But if I don't get game the next turn, then I just lose. So, uh, <laughs> Yeah, I found myself uh, in a bit of a spot, and I think that I have the 2k and 1k in hand, so I probably should protect it and try and go for game, but if it if I can't, uh, it's going to be really detrimental for us. And I do decide to counter out. I use the Suru and the Borsalino to protect it. Um, I'm not entirely sure if there was a perfect way to swing here, but I do choose to go 9 with Dr. Hogback. Uh, Slight misplay, not very big, but I should have just went um, nine with Gecko Moria first. But he gives me, and he ends up getting a 2k out of life, and he gives me the zero cost event plus the 2k counter. And I was like, oh man, dude, now we're now we're in a bad spot. And I'm now kind of like shooting myself in the foot, thinking, ah, oh, I really should have just like either went for board or 
uh, try and like establish, you know, a bit of a board using leader effect that turn. And, and now I feel as though I, I kind of messed up, uh, but it's a tough call. I feel like it's not an easy one to make. And, um, with six Dawn left, I can just dedicate all six and go for the Doflamingo, but I'm putting, that would be me putting him on not having a 2k counter. And, uh, it's a, it's a bit risky, but I think that's probably what I end up doing. I'm trying to remember in this exact moment, I, I kind of counted out like, all right, what were, what were the ways that he countered in the previous turns? If he did get out of certain attacks, I think it's fine that I can just go 11 and that he more, more than likely doesn't have the 2k. Uh, I was thinking that, you know, what cards did he search off of baby five, as well as the brand news that are on board? Um, yeah, super tough call, but, uh, I think that had I had not attacked Ryuma that one turn and I had went, uh, into life, we would have been in a much better spot to go for game this turn. And now I'm just going to use leader effect, uh, nine K to life, uh, bringing back Dr. Hogback. And I just put a couple cards to the bottom and I think I just pick up a Perona. Yeah. I just wanted a two K counter to, uh, potentially, like survive the next turn depending on what he goes for and i'll just go ahead and pass but we got him down to zero life now but we have a completely open board it is his for the taking uh he's just gotta attack into my characters and they are gone so yeah not the best spot to be in uh if he's got a 10 cost dofi as well that's uh honestly a pretty incredible play that we won't be able to stop and then it's more than likely game after that so i was just trying to think of what was the best option that i had and i'm gonna be honest i didn't really have great options uh, i think my biggest mistake right there at the very end though was swinging nine with dr hogback instead of just moria because had i just swung with moria i would have had the dawn to potentially play down whatever card i have in hand as well as um dr hogback uh, or something else to get, you know, uh, off of leader effect. Actually, no, because I wouldn't have had, that's right, I would have had to have two cards in hand in order to do that. But there goes my entire board, and then he plays a Borsalino into a Sabo, and now I know that I am pretty much, I'm pretty much screwed. I've got two cards in hand, <clears throat> a dream, and uh, I believe these two cards are actually two 2Ks. And I'm just considering like, okay, if I play these down, I just lose, right? Like, I just lose. Because he just swings all the cards that he has on board at my life, you know, for 5K. Because I would have nothing in hand. So I have to keep these in order to potentially survive. And the only way that I can maybe get lucky is if I just swing all 15k into life he blocks and then i'm able to defend out and uh and uh actually uh, yeah i'm just kind of thinking of whether i want to use leader effect oh shoot i'm actually thinking about it but no i'm reconsidering i think it goes through my mind now that i'm like yeah i can't afford to drop these two cards not even one of them realistically because using the leader effect i have to trash one and then it's like okay cool i present a body to the board but I just lose it instantly. So, yep, I just keep the two Peronas and I just swing all 15k to life. We get the block and now I kind of have to hope and pray that uh, I can survive this turn. And then the following turn, I can maybe get like an uh, Ice Age or a um, Great Eruption and then be able to remove his Sabo. And now at the very end of this game, I... I'm going to be honest with you, I don't know exactly what's correct because he does swing a really annoying 5k right here. And I feel as though I have to counter out because of how many swings he has. And he's going to go, he's thinking about doing another 5, and, and he does. And so I can just counter out and I don't die this turn, but then he just blockers and I lose. So <laughs> I'm in this weird, like... I don't know. <laughs> I'm in this weird mentality where I'm like, man, I don't want to counter out, but I, I feel like I actually have to, which is miserable. So I just have to bank on him not having uh, another blocker. And unfortunately for us, he told me that he top decked another Sabo right there at the very end of the game. So really rough for us now with Sabo on the board and not being KOable. I have 
no potential way to get through and i just tell him dude you got it i was like that's uh that was the the answer you needed and uh, it was tough to get through that at the very end but super solid match all around i think perona's not the most fun matchup for gecko moria but it is uh, a really good matchup nonetheless just like a you know great match to play and I hope you guys enjoyed. I'd love to hear y'all's thoughts about uh, the different, you know, Opio 5 leaders and how you guys feel about the certain matchups. Other than that, I will catch y'all in the next one, all right? Peace.